Hi, my name is Michelle Putnick. I'm the Worldwide Business Development Leader for Manufacturing at AWS. Today, we're going to talk about customer centricity in the manufacturing with operational improvements. So, digital transformation is happening everywhere, across every industry, in manufacturing, across discrete, across process, uh, essentially everywhere. Uh, folks are interested in driving operational efficiency. They're interested in driving closer relationships with their customers, taking cost out of supply chain. The areas are, are significant and many. Um, when, when I think about this from a vertical application perspective, I can see it, as I mentioned, in discrete and, and process. You see it in agriculture, power and utilities, energy, mining, transportation and logistics. But as I mentioned, it's really across the board, financial sector, healthcare, you name it. Everybody's going through this and most customers are looking for, for opportunities. Some of them are looking for you know, these opportunities holistically. Some are looking for um, maybe a proof of concept, where to start. I think the most important learning thus far in this transformational journey is to get uh, to the first step and take that first step, get on to, towards the journey. Um, I think one really good way of looking at this as, as um, at leaders in manufacturing is, you know, you have two levers essentially to, uh, to, uh, to work with. You have a revenue lever and you have a cost lever. So if it's revenue, um, how do I find that? What kind of um, business transformation can I drive? If I can make my um, equipment or product smart, what does that mean from a revenue perspective uh, potential? Uh, what does it mean from a customer relationship perspective and expectation uh, on, on the customer side, of course? Um, or I look at opportunities for driving efficiency. That may very well be um, in the plant floor across your uh, portfolio of, uh, of factories. Uh, it may be across your supply chain. Uh, it may be to be uh, um, you know, smarter about predicting the future uh, in terms of, uh, of customer requirements. Uh, in the PLM process, uh, there's many places to start. There's no one uh, fixed area that says, hey, you should begin here and stop here. Um, you should really look at it, not just by function north to south, but you should also look at uh, the opportunity east to west. And that is certainly, I think, a, a, a really important criteria when it comes to, uh, to driving customer centricity. Um, they don't expect to be handed off between your different functions uh, across the company, they should, but they do expect to have one cohesive experience, maybe through one application uh, or, uh, or at least from the experience side. So digital transformation, huge increase uh, across a lot of verticals, uh, across manufacturing, but also in other areas as well. Now, is it easy? Well, um, if, if, it were, if it were, um, that would have been great. It's not that easy, but I think the, uh, the principles are there. Uh, the, most of the tooling that we've been looking at over the last few years is available. More and more you know, prepackaged applications are supporting customers through their digital endeavors, regardless of where they start. Is there one miracle wand that you can wave and all of a sudden uh, all of this happens at once. I haven't found one. I'm, I'm sure you haven't either. Uh, but some of the ingredients or some of the challenges are the following. Getting access to data. Um, I think the industry harps on this, but it's a really important one. Um, this data is fragmented, sits in different silos, sits in different functions. Uh, has different um, budgets associated with how that data was, was, was crafted or created or stored or manipulated or analyzed. Um, and we shouldn't underscore the importance of, of getting, to, uh, getting to a place where we start standardizing how we store it, uh, how we look for it, how we analyze it, visualize it, execute on it, and so on and so forth. That's a really important piece. And that kind of ties into the data management side of the equation as well. Um, I would encourage you, know, to, you to think about all of these steps and the last one, like I mentioned, being execution. Execution doesn't necessarily mean that a person executes the final step, right? So you have amassed it, you have stored it, you have massaged it, manipulated it, um, analyzed it, run it through machine learning models. 
visualize it, yes, um, but then execute on it. You should think about that from a perhaps a robotic process automation perspective. Because if I have all this data and machine learning models can help me drive the decision making, look for the opportunities where I can automate the decision making. That could be in sourcing, could be an in inventory optimization, it could be in production planning, it could be in a number of areas, forecasting, and so on and so forth. But those are the real opportunities when it comes to um, the efficiency lever in terms of cost takeout. So I would really spend some, some time there trying to understand what are those opportunities. And I'm not, you know, these are not one or two or five. These are likely hundreds of, of small process steps or processes in, them, in themselves that you can actually automate. So you look at the data lake where you're amassing your data, you pass through this journey of data transformation and then all the way to the execution step. And the execution is actually an output of um, mostly machine learning models out based on that data in the data lake. But the receiving end of that uh, package is in the process that you run today. That may be in your ERP system, your PLM system, your MES system, and so on and so forth. So look for those opportunities and look for the opportunity where you can automate some of that. Um, because you're going to drive, the machine learning models will help you to, to achieve you know, more accuracy in the decision making. So you know, put a question mark on, can, does a person need to do that? Or can the process just execute by itself, uh, if that is reasonable? Um, there's been a lot of proof of concepts um, over these, these last three, four years at, at minimum. Uh, small one, large ones, um, and they are oftentimes they're, they're needed. Um, but I think the, the challenge uh, as to why some of them kind of you know, stop and you know, we proved something, but then it's hard to move on, is the um, many times lack, lack of scale in the, in the tooling and the, the supporting platform. Uh, scaling is a critical piece uh, to, to drive, you know, these types of programs successfully. So if you solved for, for, um, predictive maintenance on a, a specific asset type, okay, but how do I do that across the entire line of assets in the, in my, in my facility? How do I do it across the entire factory? How do I do it across my portfolio of factories around the world? Um, even though the equipment may be different, speaking different protocols of different ages and so on and so forth. Uh, so scale becomes massively important. Um, decision making, I think we touched upon that uh, a little bit, uh, but decision making without latency, uh, getting data, uh, where it is produced, making decisions on that data, where it is produced. Uh, so hybrid scenarios are, are typically critical in this, uh, in this area as well. Security, um, always job one uh, for AWS and should be job one for you as well, as I'm sure it is. Um, so these are really something that is, is baked into, uh, into all of these types of challenges. Security is, is always number one. So those are just some of them. It's not the, uh, the entire list of, of challenges, of course, but these are the one that, ones that kind of stick out. So you know, working with, with uh, AWS, working with our partners, to try to understand how we're going to mitigate some of these or how we're going to tackle them together. Um, by all means, that's a great conversation to have. So where, where do people start? Where is the opportunity? Like I mentioned, it's not one particular place. It's in a lot of different places. Um, and you can start in engineering and design. Maybe you want to start on the factory floor with, with optimizing production or optimizing asset performance. Uh, maybe you want to start in quality management. Um, there's a lot of customers looking at uh, quality and the quality opportunity to, to be improved um, by, by using more, uh, more cheap IP-ready cameras, not just have one at the end of the line or have a, you know, uh, you, you select a handful of products that you, that, you, that you look at, but looking at every product. Um, looking at uh, looking at it from uh, uh, by by using computer computer vision and associated uh, algorithms that support that that is really something that is is hot today. Um, worker safety, work productivity certainly uh, during the, this uh, this last year has been uh, has been quite prevalent. Um, smart products and machines that's an area that most at least discrete companies have been in for for a long time. 
uh, I think the scaling of that uh, and the uh, yeah the scaling of that opportunity is is here. Um, so so certainly as you look at building smarts into your product that goes out to customers, uh, how do you do that in a cost efficient way and in a secure way? Um, rolling out new capabilities based on software, uh, maybe not just on hardware, uh, and also bringing back um, telemetry from those products. Uh, maybe feed that into the PLM process or the uh, the design process. So not just relying on simulations of of a of a physical product, but really getting the telemetry from the product when it is in the field. Uh, is it performing as as we intended? Uh, or are you know people uh, wor working on with this product or interacting with this product in ways that we did not expect, um, and and draw some conclusions based on that? Should we be making different material choices and so on and so forth? There's quite a lot of of opportunity there. Um, supply chain is probably you know one of the top uh, you know top three topics that we that we come across at least across these kind of six um, areas and. Uh, and, and it's, you know, it's kind of a logical conclusion of, you know, we have a lot of customers of ours starting in, in uh, driving um, factory optimization or smart factories so under the, the second pillar here, production and asset optimization. And it's great to drive efficiencies across plant floor or across a portfolio. But if I still don't know what my, you know, if, or if I lack in the forecast accuracy department, Essentially, it means I'm, I'm, I'm building to inventory, and that is impacting my financial statement. So working along those types of areas, connecting, you know, logically connecting um, for improved forecast accuracy with my ability to, to produce and vice versa, um, if I'm producing, again, then I have to ask myself against, you know, against what, uh, what forecast am I actually doing this. Uh, because that allows you to do a lot of cost takeout, especially around inventory, um, sourcing, and a number of different uh, or other areas in in, in supply chain. Um, there's no one perfect you know place to start. You can pl you can start anywhere. Uh, if you're driving a, a customer centric um, kind of model in your company, um, you know smart products and machines is a good is a, obviously a good place to start because that's how your customers interact with your product. Um, but then kind of follow that, that thread uh, back to PLM um, or back to R&D, back to supply chain um, into, uh, into uh, the plants as well. So a lot of opportunities uh, and a lot of commonalities as to, um, as to where customers uh, likes to, uh, to engage. So AWS has been in this space for, for a number of years now, and, and these are you know, some of the some of the great customers that we've had the opportunity to uh, to work closely with. Um, there are some large companies here, sure. There are some medium sized. There are some small. Um, all of them wanting to uh, to drive uh, their transformation in, in any of these areas that we that we talked about. And the journey is is just starting. Um, so it's been a, a real pleasure working with with many of these organizations. Um, one of them, uh, Invista, is uh, has just been a pleasure over the last you know year or so, um, trying to get value out of data that they already had their hands on, um, but but haven't really tapped into the potential of what that uh, what that data is. So creating an AWS data lake, um, starting to uh, to look at the opportunity, um, and also driving some of the automation that I talked about. In this case, they're they're running SAP for for ERP. Um, so looking bad at order uh, patterns and, and predicting the future order volume and therefore, you know, automatically stocking and, and, and doing those types of, uh, uh, types of opportunities. Just a small example, but really impactful for, uh, for Invista. And it's been a real pleasure working with them. So what we've heard from customers and partners alike is, is you know, help us help us understand how to get to value you know quicker now that now that the the the, the market i should say um are is observing patterns that are repeatable or re repeating themselves how can we put those into uh you know in a consumable way so we don't you know need to spend time you know thinking about uh stuff that is already solved in, in other areas so essentially avoiding reinventing the wheel um 
So what we've been doing uh, in, in the last few months is, is really bringing together our assets that are relevant for, for industrial um, along with our partners' uh, capabilities and packaging and building you know, purpose-built services um, uh, for these types of use cases that, that is uh, you know, a requirement by customers today. So in that journey, um, we've obviously tapped into some of Amazon's experience uh, as it comes to factory operations. So if you think about our fulfillment centers, which by the way, if you haven't visited one, um, there's ample opportunity to do uh, virtual tours. Um, you can find those. Uh, you can find those links online, so you can see what goes on in fulfillment centers. See what type of assets are there. Uh, what's going on in the you know in the areas of robotics, um, conveyors, servo motors. How do we keep them you know up 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 to um, um, you know the functional requirements that that we have, so that we can promise. Uh, a customer, a particular product on Thursday by, you know, at two o'clock or, or, or some such. Uh, so we've really taken that experience from, from Amazon um, and, and taken influence from Amazon and, of course, other customers to drive some of the development of these, uh, of these services. Um, so that as a backdrop and, of course, you know, working with our partners uh, to build on top of that, that has been instrumental to, uh, to, uh, to AWS for, in, for industrial. So in essence, this is about choice. Um, how do I start? It doesn't matter how you start or where you start. Um, are you, you know, in inclined to, uh, to build? Well, then there's AWS services and, and solutions that you can start, uh, start off with directly. Um, if you want to work with one of our partners that is using, you know, AWS as their, um, as their backdrop, absolutely possible. Um, there's, you know, existing partner solutions that are readily available uh, through our marketplace. Um, so there's, there's no one way of, of, of starting. You can start in any, in any area that you like and engage in any which way that, uh, that you prefer. Uh, we're here to help and, uh, and just give us the word. So if I look at, you know, some of the um, broad capabilities uh, that we've now been kind of adding up through, uh, through the last few years, um, there's, a, uh, there, there's an apparent, you know, kind of conclusion or, or requirement or need as it comes to what needs to stay, you know, on premises, driving these types of hybrid, uh, hybrid uh, uh, requirements or architectures. And there's a number of things that we make available from, you know, lightweight uh, operating systems like FreeRTOS to the AWS Snowball family to Outposts and so on and so forth for, you know, these types of, uh, um, um, you know, where you're trying to avoid late latency and round robins up to cloud that will potentially take uh, uh, too long to, uh, to wait for a result. Uh, but then use, utilizing the power of, of cloud for, uh, for storage, for compute, uh, uh, cranking out machine learning models for deployment at uh, on the factory floor or on products for that matter that are out in the field, um, uh, edge gateways such as IoT Greengrass and, and so on and so forth. So we've been busy. Uh, we're making it available, you know, across our um, our uh, availability zones. Uh, keeping in mind, you know, security, ease of deployment, uh, ease of development and ease of management when you think about these types of resources. So that's really what we are, um, have been working on and continue uh, to work on today. So in terms of AWS industrial and, and we think about some of the services that we've been uh, putting out lately, um, AWS IoT SiteWise has been around for a while where you, uh, you, know, you collect, store, organize and, and monitor data from uh, industrial equipment keywords being here, uh, here at scale. So it's not about one piece of asset that you're getting data from. It's the entire line. It's many lines. It's one factory. It's a portfolio of factories, but doing that in a consistent fashion, critically important. Um, the, uh, the AWS uh, Panorama appliance, um, you know, you, you have on-premise uh, typically cameras today. Uh, you can feed that into, uh, to, uh, into an appliance. Um, uh, you know, get those feeds into in, uh, through that appliance, 
and then start you know looking at patterns, uh, potentially adding machine learning capabilities uh, to it, discerning people's movements. Uh, are they in the right place? Are they you know potentially going to bump into each other? Things like that that you uh, that we you know today need to, need to pay more attention to. Um, for camera builders and, and device uh, 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 folks, uh, there's an SDK, so you can integrate some of these capabilities directly into cameras or uh, on edge devices. So we you know we serve that community with with a device SDK for Panorama. Um, look out for equipment. Um, is trying to understand abnormal be, uh, behavior based on existing sensor data that comes from uh, that comes from 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 equipment that is in place or in field today. Um, I mentioned quality. Amazon Lookout for Vision is is one of those um, um, you know anomaly detect detectors uh, based on computer vision. Uh, so. IP65 typically and up uh, capab capable cameras um, are, are reaching a price point which is is uh, is reasonable uh, today vis-a-vis uh, -vis what it was uh, in years past. Also, these types of systems are uh, are are or have been quite uh, limited in in their scope. So, what we're really trying to do here is to look at the computer vision application at large when it comes to quality. That may mean you install 10 new cameras um, and you look for you know, potential quality uh, issues or, or try to predict potential quality issues before they happen. Uh, that way we can reduce scrap and, uh, and drive a lot of you know, benefits out of, uh, out of that. Um, Amazon Monitron is, is kind of a, an end-to-end -end system for, for equipment monitoring. Uh, again, looking for abnormal machine behavior, and, and that also, you know, which also enables uh, predictive maintenance scenarios. Uh, comes with temperature sensor and vibration sensor, so it's actually a piece of hardware plus um, plus the uh, the services associated with that, uh, so that you can uh, hit the ground running really, really quickly. Uh, you can order those uh, uh, today um, on Amazon.com. So uh, a key piece of this, of course, is the uh, we talked about machine learning, and I, you know, we all talk about machine learning in in, in various different contexts uh, today. Um, the industrial AI at the top of this slide is kind of what I just talked about, but there's many other pieces. Um, I think I mentioned customers like to start in on the factory floor. They like to start in supply chain or 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 R and D. Um, so an example would be, you know, I, I think I mentioned the um, the logic, you know, in, in um, yes, I can I can optimize and drive efficiencies on the plant floor, but if I don't know when my uh, what customers want to buy and and buy when, it's almost a moot point because I'm more efficiently stuffing my inventory position. Uh, so Amazon Forecast, you know, could be a suitable uh, uh, service. Uh, for you to uh, to use in order to understand forecasting uh, better. So we work with customers uh, in in that space. Um, should you want to choose, you know, you know, to move further down the stack to our machine learning services, um, such as Amazon SageMaker, yeah, that gives you a lot of, of flexibility uh, if you have you know machine learning teams and data scientists available to you. And also supporting, you know, most of the uh, uh, the frameworks and the infrastructure that is that is needed here. Um, but this is really a, think about it as a as a you know where are my capabilities? Where do I want to be when it comes to machine learning? Do I want to buy finished uh, end to end kind of services, or do I need to uh, to you know, or do I have a data science team where I can where I can play you know deeper uh, and further down in, in the stack? There's all kind all kinds of options here for you, really. Um, there's other solutions that we've, um, you know, built over the course of the last uh, 12 months or so, um, some even, uh, you know, maybe two, three years ago. Um, Amazon Virtual Andon, uh, Virtual Andon system is, uh, is quite prevalent uh, across our customers. Um, um, Andon systems as we know them today, um, yeah, you pull the cord. You say that you know that somebody comes out. What do you need? Well, I have a problem with this, and then they you know go back and you know get the right uh, stuff to fix your problem. Um, it typically, doesn't record what the problem was and how the resolution uh, came to be. 
Uh, what we're doing in, in, in Amazon Virtual and on is to keep track of all that because if I'm amassing data about problems and, and problem solving, um, then again, I can actually pr start predicting stuff. Uh, so that's just another way of looking at, um, uh, at the and on possibility. Connected factory solution uh, and our machine to cloud connectivity framework allows us to, uh, to more straightforward uh, connect our, our assets um, between you know shop floor to uh, to cloud and and, and edge of course um, smart products you know blueprints uh, to uh, to get into that space if you want to drive you know customer intimacy um, that's available predictive maintenance is a you know that's a broad topic uh, but we certainly have um, a lot of prepackaged assets in this in this space um, scale out computing IoT device simulator these are just a few of them. Uh, that are available, and uh, and there's many more. Now, when it comes to well, how do I, you know, how do I engage with with AWS? Well, you can talk to your solution architects uh, that is available to you uh, in your account teams. You can talk to our professional services uh, uh, folks. Uh, you can talk to you know our machine learning solutions or IoT labs, um, and of course, then there's the uh, the partner network that you can directly engage with or through us. It, it, it doesn't really matter. There's no one size fits all. Uh, these are just different points of entry uh, and different types of programs that you can take, uh, you know, drive benefit from. Um, when it comes to the partner side, there's really two, two facets of this. Consulting partners, technology partners, right? So consulting would be... Um, uh, you know, how do I, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to architect this? Uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and then there's the ISV side, which, you know, more represents the technology partners. So, uh, and of course, we work a lot with management consulting companies as well. Um, if I'm going to, you know, try to take cost out of my supply chain and, you know, rejig that, um, I may want to, uh, to, uh, to consult with a management uh, consultant as well. Uh, on the impacts of that and how to, you know, define new metrics or, or improve existing ones and so on and so forth. So this is just some, some represent, uh, representation of, of those partners, both consulting and, and technology partners. There are many more, uh, but these are, these are a few of those. Um, you know, with Autodesk, uh, their, their Forge solution with Deloitte, Smart Factory Fabric, uh, Lumada from Hitachi Vantara, Thing works from PTC, Siemens MindSphere, and on and on. Uh, again, just a few examples of, of uh, partners that have built, um, you know, solutions on top of, of, of AWS, and um, that have this 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 available, you know, to you to uh, to start off with. Um, so great partnerships in that space. So with that, um, I'm wrapping up a little bit. Um, there's a lot of training uh, available to you in, um, in, in this space. Um, IoT is kind of a, a, a core foundation in, in many of these scenarios. The, the connectivity, the analytics, uh, the device management, um, some of the automation we talked about, edge capabilities, getting to the data or getting the data off of the asset. Uh, you know, one way or another is, is going to have some sort of IoT requirement to it. Learning how to uh, make use of that is a, uh, is a great way of, uh, of getting started. So make use of that training. Um, I highly recommend it. Now with that, I want to thank you for, for listening in. Um, there's a lot more to be, uh, to be said about this. Um, we are putting out various different contents. We have podcasts, uh, of course, our web properties, uh, where we reference our own services and solutions, our partner services and solutions. Um, so I would recommend that you take full advantage uh, of that. And as always, please complete the session survey that makes, um, uh, that helps us uh, to make this uh, type of session even more uh, relevant to you in the future. So with that, thank you very much for listening.